um, some of the FAQs uh, that we, we have listed here. Uh, uh, one of the questions is like, what is the earliest ident identify identifiable point of a potential startup? And uh, and it's really like like it's it's it, it's true sided. Uh, usually, it's not only to look at the ideas or pe people with ideas, but then, then the other side is also look for people who has drive and passion, but they don't yet know what their idea is. Like, what do they want to commit to? Um, so it's from, from these two, two, two uh, perspectives. And uh, and uh, so from idea perspective and from team um, uh, entrepreneurs perspective, or a potential co-founder candidate perspective. So those that are, have not yet committed to their idea but want to be part of startup, they are good potential team member potential or a founder uh, potential and, uh, and, and and then the third category is that they have identified a problem but they don't yet have a solution and that's usually a very good uh, good starting point so it's either a solution looking for a problem or it's a problem looking for a solution or it's an entrepreneur looking for uh, idea or, or problem to commit to or a team that they can join and uh, and and really, these these if if this information is is collected from from volume of candidates through through uh, system or systems, uh, it can be much more effective to make these things uh, match. And there's uh, good to match then uh, entrepreneurs with certain passion or problem in mind with hackathon events that are focused on specific type of uh, segments or to match with research findings uh, or have researchers present their findings and have entrepreneurs in the audience and so forth. Um, so this is a, 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 a bit of a lighter question in the context of, of with all of this knowledge, can startups be made failure proof? Uh, basically meaning that they would never fail. The answer is, in, in theory, yes, of course, but it's not the target even, uh, because it's like, it's, it's the saying that, that uh, if there is not enough risk, there is not an, uh, enough potential uh, success. So for example, uh, the, the famous uh, Formula One driver, I don't remember the, which one of them, but had the saying that uh, you can only know how far you, fast you can go once you have gone out of the track. Before you are on the safe side and you don't know how far you can go. The trick is that you can't do that all the time and the surrounding when you do it and, and how you do it needs to be uh, safe enough so that you can actually fail and, and avoid the terminal failure. But at the same time, uh, of course, uh, sometimes you want to push the ambitions all, all the way to the level where you know the likelihood of terminal failure is also very high, uh, but you do the, that knowingly. Uh, the worst situation is when people unknowingly do things where they are heading for, towards terminal failure, and that's a big focus of everything that we do, is try to bring the understanding so that the risk is always taken uh, knowingly and therefore more prepared and then for also more focused to try to avoid it uh, when it comes to terminal failure but at the same time that uh, uh, failure is part of the validation process where you need to build a, a setting where you do it at such level that it, it, it's basically built to, built to fail or, or sustain the failures and, and actually improve from that. And and uh, at the same time, a lot of the, regardless of all the knowledge out there, uh, regardless of the index and the modules that we put in, um, the fact is that people often don't do the things that they're supposed to be doing. Or they don't like to do the right things. They like to do things their way. And this is specifically strong, of course, uh, within us entrepreneurs. 
and uh, and uh, sometimes it may be difficult to communicate and get the information passed uh, to be to be listened. Um, so that's a challenge, and uh, and it's the same as we all know how what it means to be fit, what you need to do, eat healthy, go to the gym, exercise. But at the same time, we know that many don't do that. They actually do quite the opposite things uh, intentionally and just accept that the consequences or don't even want to think about them. So building startups is an extreme sport. Uh, and definitely building successful startup and, and uh, pushing new innovations to market even more so. So it requires a certain type of discipline uh, to actually um, execute with the knowledge that is given, but also be coachable, be open to listening as source of information when making your own decisions. So, so the types of, of those who don't listen and don't hear, regardless of what they do, are not, not, most likely not going not gonna to make it. So again, about the failure, it's part of the innovation process, it's a natural part. Uh, it means to be able to implement, test and measure to improve. And this measure, this uh, implementation or this uh, innovation iteration cycle is key. It's key for measuring also the, the, the progress at the validation phase, but it also applies to all the different things not only the innovation itself, but it also applies to uh, all the different things that a company does when they try a new, you know, newsletter headline, a new blog post headline, or they new, try a new product page, a product description, um, or they provide a, a different approach uh, reaching the customer, they try a new marketing channel, and so forth. Uh, the whole model is based on if the more you try, the more you find out what works and what doesn't work. To, to try to succeed without that kind of approach is too slow. So the failure is built in. But the key is to separate the failure acceptance and the failure thinking uh, to, to a manageable level. So to really avoid what are the types of things you have to consider differently or at least taking the risks much knowingly that, that the, the outcome may be total failure. Also, uh, some myths about the, the motivators of uh, entrepreneurs, and this is specifically if, uh, being new to entrepreneurship, either as a founder or as an advisor or support personnel, that usually the drivers for those who are successful uh, or are most committed uh, much different than the, the financial side. So really wanting to make a, a real impact to the world, solve a problem that they have personally, or some of their family member has had, or, or they have some experience of, of some problem that they have seen too closely that they want to help solve. Uh, wanting to test their own skills and drive their own learning and capabilities. This is more like a, you know, the, the thinking of trying to climb a mountain and preparing for that or going to put yourself into ultimate test to challenge how far you can go, how much you can learn. Uh, wanting to validate a theory. So there, there are situations uh, where you know you get an idea in your head and you, the only way to get it out from bothering and taking your sleep or taking your kind of capacity to relax or do other things is to actually do something for it. Um, and, and, and basically then you, you just have to start working on it. Or it's driven by a vision. You see something, um, an entrepreneur sees something that, um, that others don't see and, uh, and, and sees that as a, as a as an opportunity for them to position themselves or to build a business or to, to find, uh, to get a, a better position uh, for them and, and, and so forth. Uh, and of course, then the, the financial is, is a driver, uh, of course, but in, for most entrepreneurs, financial is a measure 
a KPI like any other KPI. It's also an enabler for them to do more what they're already doing, uh, where, where it's not so much about uh, really driving for financial success. Or even in financial success, sometimes it's driven by the family situation that they're not necessarily trying to cater for themselves, but they're trying to cater for their family, uh, parents, uh, relatives, uh, and so forth. Uh, but of course, it's also some are purely driven by financial success. But I would argue that startups are, while they can be widely successful, it's not definitely, it's the, the, the very risky way, uncertain way uh, to get a financial success. If you want to get financial success, there's like the whole financial sector. Uh, there's much more high paying jobs that are very boring or very demanding on the level of security uh, or things like that, that are very high paying. So um, this is that is from the financial perspective. And then of course, specifically with, uh, with uh, uh, younger first time entrepreneurs, it can be as simple as, well, why not? It's a good option uh, just because it's different or depending on place, uh, it may be different more or less of a, of a new norm than a, than a traditional option. <clears throat> so as a summary uh, also for why this framework and development phases have created is really to come up with this common startup process um, framework, not just the investors language and investors perspective of seed round, funding round, launch, uh, scale, but really to open it up into much more holistic view and then also uh, create it as an effective communication and categorizing tool to accelerate discussion and understanding of different services. And then to use it as a very quick way to educate about the different relationships of different types of knowledge uh, that exist out there and where to find uh, deeper knowledge of, about different different uh, parts. And of course, because it's open framework <clears throat> for anyone to join, to, to try poke holes into it, to say something is wrong or something is not working uh, or share ideas or feedback <clears throat> to help improve it or to contribute uh, along the way. And all of these, everything that we do are part of our, our mission to help scale innovation entrepreneurship uh, globally. So why so much focus on innovation in general? Well, as we know, the, the, the world is not getting any simpler. There is not being any less problems. The more of this linear world keeps changing into more uh, uh, non-linear world, uh, the more things accelerate, the more change there is, the more gap there is between past learnings and new learnings, the more the digital side uh, evolves, the more people who understand digital sides versus those who don't, don't understand digital side, the, the, the population growth, the climate change, the, the plastic waste, you name it, the world is full of problems. But at the same time, there's more and more tools available freely or almost free for anyone from anywhere uh, to, to work on. So the, the, the world is just the one big um, open innovation arena that keeps feeding um, uh, more of the innovation. So, so behind the drivers and the mega trends, um, is, is, that's a good, good outlook for, for looking at solving the problems. Uh, and, and coming up with new opportunities and new economic development. Um, but at the same time, um, and, uh, it still needs a lot of support. Uh, there's many things to do to, to help improve the process. Um, one question we, we have got oftentimes also to cover is, can this concept 
uh, like an internal startup, can it be replicated inside a big company uh, or inside a university? And uh, I would say that uh, that that there are definitely opportunities, and we know at least several concepts where entrepreneurship is actually driven inside uh, universities or higher education or even even uh, earlier stages of education in different formats and it can contribute significantly uh, into the capabilities and the mindset of people coming out but there's very little uh, cases where like real companies are and, and successful cases are built uh, much beyond uh, the initial validation inside a structure um, so so that's that's uh, a, a a a creates some of while it creates some opportunities it limits uh, some of the other opportunities and it limits for example commitment and free validation where and on one hand it provides brand support existing customer base and so forth of course there are always cases there but uh, but not something that systematically works. Um, that is a well-known concept. Uh, maybe there is, but then maybe they are keeping it to themselves and not opening if it's happening inside a big company. But more and more big companies are systematically building their ability to work with open innovation and, and seeing startups the same way as Apple sees uh, app developers in their app stores. So, that's it. That's the end of module of this module. And uh, as I said, this is a, a companion module for for the uh, module one. So the other part focuses much more on the uh, development of startup and startups and startup journey on the key stages. And this module focuses on the development of the ecosystem and support services. An advisory uh, supporting startups and then the following uh, three modules uh, each focus uh, takes a deep dive into the activities and things that a startup has to work through um, and how they can work through those uh, activities and why should they even consider working through those activities at any given uh, development phase. And, and then um, later on, we're looking to provide also separately support for the advisory perspective into um, individual modules. And we are also providing that as, um, as, a, as a support uh, beyond uh, this format uh, as well.